So, you got an offer from a theatrical agent. That's exciting, it's a big deal. But wait, before you pop champagne, you've got some big decisions to make. Is this the right agent for you? If so, why? And if they are, are you ready to put pen to paper to sign their contract? These are questions that you have to ask yourself because the next 12 months to three years could rely on it, depending on the contract you sign. Welcome back to the channel. This is part two of the agent meeting series. And in this video, I'm gonna cover the offer, the five reasons why I accepted a theatrical agent's offer and the contract, my process of negotiating the contract. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's probably because you haven't checked out part one yet. So you may wanna go back and check that out and then come back to this video. And I'll leave a link up top and also in the description to make it easy for you. It's easy to get excited about a theatrical agent's offer where we want to say yes because we've worked so hard to finally get one. But sometimes you have to wait to respond because one, you might have other meetings, so you don't wanna be hasty. You wanna weigh out your options and meet everyone. And two, you wanna give yourself time to consider if this agent is actually for you, like I said, for the next 12 months of your contract. So here are the five reasons why I said yes to an agent. One, as I mentioned in part one, this agent recently opened their theatrical department. And while there are pros and cons to the new kid on the block, if you will, as a middle-aged black woman with only 15 television feature film and co-star credits, finding the right agent has been challenging. And I also talked about in part one, how most agencies have multiple actors of similar types. Well, this agency only has me right now, and hopefully that will work in my favor. Two, being a formidable negotiator is high on my list of requirements for an agency. And this one has over 10 plus years of experience as print agents. So I have to deduce that they know what they're doing when it comes to negotiating contracts because the print world is the wild, wild west and um, there's no regulations. Number three, they are a SAG after franchise office and I expect to sign a SAG after contract which offers more protection for the actors, but more on that later. Number four, they offer to represent me for print work, which means more opportunities to earn money. And five, they pass the vibe check. They were easy to talk to, they seemed genuinely excited to represent me and optimistic about our future growth. And they also came highly recommended by a friend. Now keep in mind, these are all the positive aspects of why I chose to sign with this agent. I spoke about the flip side of my concerns in part one, I think in a different time, I'd be concerned that casting directors wouldn't be readily welcoming to a new theatrical agent's roster. But in my 10,000 plus hours of casting director Q&As, I am reminded that the self-tape auditions have leveled the playing field where casting directors are willing to give more talent and more theatrical offices a chance, more opportunity. So the main thing that I need to do right now is I have to remember to manage my expectations because when it comes to signing a new agent, or with a new agency, I tend to romanticize the potential success, like daydreaming, like back in high school when I used to write names in cursive with hearts in my notebook. I'm not doing that this time because the sobering reality is nothing happens fast in Hollywood. It takes time to gain momentum, like getting your material set up. Maybe I need new headshots, I'm not sure. And sometimes it can take weeks or even months for auditions to even start coming in. So instead of having stars in my eyes, pun intended, I'm gonna pace myself out and I'm gonna enjoy the journey. And if things don't work out in the next four months to a year, I'll go back to the drawing board and start looking again. Now let's talk about this contract situation. And before I do, I think it's important that I preface that I am not a lawyer. So the contents of this video should not be viewed as legal advice. It's my point of view. If you have legal issues or a confusing contract, you should definitely seek guidance of an entertainment lawyer. Got it? Good. Okay. Now for me, the most nerve wracking part of accepting the offer is the contract because contracts can be disorienting to say the least, and you never know what they're going to entail. Sometimes we get so hype about the offer that we forget to focus on the contract itself, but we have got to be diligent with reading these contracts. Oftentimes, agency contracts are typically problematic and they're designed to be in the agent's best interest. So like a bad relationship, let's not ignore the red flags. So there are two types of theatrical agent contracts. 
There's the SAG-AFTRA theatrical TV contract, and this is a standard union agreement that covers areas like minimum pay, residuals, working hours, health and pension contributions, ensuring that actors receive fair compensation and protections under the union's guidelines. It's kind of like a safety net, a contract that has safety provisions built in. And then there's the general services agreement, AKA the GSA. This is a more non-flexible, non-union contract that outlines the terms of the working relationship between you and an agent, but it may not offer the same standardized protections and benefits as sag after contracts. So with this contract, you want to play, pay close attention. And if you're not versed in contract law, it is wise to hire an entertainment lawyer to advise you on the legal ramifications of this contract to assist you in negotiating or renegotiating better terms. Now, I may be a little too careful when it comes to contracts, if there's such a thing. And don't get me wrong, I've fallen victim to signing a bad contract, especially in earlier in my career. I've signed some contracts without understanding what they said. And it's interesting because when I was a little girl, when my mother was studying law, she would tell me to never sign anything without reading it first. But she left out the part that's most important, which is I should know what it says before signing it. And I think even better advice would be, I don't have to sign it at all. And that would have been helpful, particularly in 2021 when I signed a contract because I wanted to help out a so-called friend. And I learned to my deficit of my nervous system and losing hair that signing a contract to help out a friend, especially a fraudulent or a phony friend, is not a good idea. Business over friends when we're doing business. Business before hoes. No, that's not it. Okay, so with this new theatrical agent, I expected them to send me a SAG after theatrical contract because they are SAG after franchised. But interestingly, they sent me a GSA that covered both theatrical and TV, print work, and a sly on camera commercials in there, which threw me for a loop. And I was infuriated because I didn't know if this was an oversight or if they were trying to be slick. And I leaned more toward the latter. <sighs> I had to work hard to give them the benefit of the doubt because my knee jerk reaction was to send them a shots fired accusatory email. But I could hear the voice of a commercial agent that I respect to this day say, Tawana, sometimes it's a mistake. So instead of allowing my anger to drive my response, I took some time to calm down. I sent the GSA to an attorney friend who pointed out the red flags and suggested that I write an email requesting the SAG-AFTRA theatrical television contract, including the negotiations of the problematic terms of the GSA and to remove commercials from the contract altogether. The attorney reminded me, Tawana, these things are common. That's why we negotiate. Well, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know that, but I'm getting better at it. And it put my mind at ease. So I put on my prover proverbial lawyer's hat and I stood on business. I followed my attorney's advice and surprisingly, the agent responded quickly with an apology and an explanation for the mishap. My old commercial agent was right. Sometimes it's just a mistake. The agency agreed to my GSA negotiations. They revised it. They took the on-camera commercials off and then they sent me a SAG-AFTRA theatrical television contract. That's a mouthful. So I was able to read it and sign it. And then we moved on to the next phase, which was me putting my pictures on Ac Actors Access. And I've already had three self-tapes auditions, self-tape auditions so far. So I would say that it's off to a good start, but it really felt good to advocate for myself and to negotiate and to ask for a negotiation. They could have said no, but I was prepared to walk away. So when it comes to contracts, I know I'm not the only one who gets triggered by agent or production contracts. It's, you know, truly a missed opportunity for universities and drama schools to add this to the curriculum like it would benefit so many actors because it's only until we're in the trenches that we learn to read comprehend negotiate contracts and some of us don't even know how to hire an attorney which i had to learn as a grown woman the most powerful thing that we can do for ourselves is to not sign a contract without the proper time to consult with a lawyer or to read it over and any agent or producer that asks us to sign an incorrigible 
contract is operating under bad faith and that to me is a huge red flag. So the lesson learned here is always know what type of contract you're signing. Contracts are confusing, but it's crucial to understand what you're agreeing to. And if you're unsure, hire an entertainment lawyer. It might cost you money up front, but the cost before signing will be much cheaper than the cost of trying to get out of a bad contract. And if you can't afford a lawyer, seek advice from friends and family who might know someone who can offer pro bono work that knows contract law. Or you can contact your union. They're not gonna give you legal advice, but maybe they'll tell you what the red flags of the contract is. And then there's always a trusty internet. And keep in mind that it's not a substitute for real legal advice. So when it comes to the GSA, We've got to put our desperation to get an agent in park. If you feel good about an agent, but the contract's crazy, or you're feeling rushed or pressured, it's a good indicator to pump the brakes, to think about your long-term goals, ask to negotiate it, and if they decline, consider walking away altogether. It's a big decision to make, but your future relies on it, and so does your peace of mind. I hope you found these insights helpful for your next agent meeting. It really is tough. It's a tough position to be in not knowing what a contract says. But if I can just help you pause and really know what your contract says before you sign it, that's the whole purpose of this, of this platform is to help you to make better decisions for your life and for your career. That's it for the series. If you haven't already, go back and check out part one. There's some great information there as well. Uh, you can check out Acting Lessons Learned, the podcast, where I share more personal details about my experiences working as an actor in LA. And um, there's some videos on the screen that you can check out. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>